looking for tomorrow, today. Trying to find a sign to point the way. It's 8 o'clock. You better get moving. You expect me at school on time. In circles, no one cares. Looking for tomorrow, a day I want to borrow. Searching for a place in time, away from doubt and sorrow. Looking for tomorrow, today. The seventh month's green is now a shade of grey. Mom, don't forget the big game after school today, okay? Okay. Looking for tomorrow, the day I want to borrow. Searching for a place in time, away from God and sorrow. This is no disco class, ladies and gentlemen. This is Afro-American history. And I expect you to conduct yourselves intelligently, with dignity and respect. Mr. Gene Alexander, uh, we do not daydream about such trivialities as baseball. Now, I strongly advise you to concentrate on the subject matter at hand, uh, and that being the history of your Afro-American ancestry. Now, if you would be so kind as to turn to page three in your text, read the first two chapters. You have approximately 30 minutes. Then we shall conclude our class today with an oral exam. Presence is welcome. Please enter. Step forward, I ask you. There is light at the end of this darkness. Step forward, my little brother. As a descendant of what many refer to as the dark continent, there is nothing to fear. Although there is beauty in the leaves of a tree, must have roots in order to survive. And so it is with you, young man. You have roots, and your roots are your foundation to strength, knowledge, and intellectual nourishment. <laughs> what is your name? My name is Jean, J-E-A-N. Are you not proud of your name? Boys for the name G-E-N-E. -E. Not all boys. Nor men, for that matter. Like who? 
Do you know where you are? Have you ever heard of Jean Baptiste Point de Sable? Nope. He was Chicago's first black settler, and he spelled his name like you, J-E-A-N. Now watch closely. The place where you stand is the Du Sable Museum of African American History, named after Jean Du Sable. He was a proud and prosperous black man who ventured here from Haiti in 1779. Mr. de Sable started the first trading post in Chicago. It was called S. Chicago then. Oh, he had a flair for adventure as well as being a dynamic businessman. His trading post flourished, allowing him to establish crucial, friendly relations with the American Indians. How do you know all of this? Because I am the tree of knowledge. The tree of what? The tree of knowledge, light, and truth. I am freedom now. I've been around many years, in one form or another. Just no wooden door. You ain't no tree of knowledge. <laughs> Very well. If I'm just an old wooden door, then let this door, this door of knowledge, open unto you and fill you with the richness of your heritage. How did you do that? I have my means. After all, I'm only an illusion, a vision of your imagination. You don't look like no illusion to me. It is an illusion, not no illusion. You sound like my history teacher, old Mr. Peters. <laughs> well, nonetheless, let us attend to the business at hand. What business? Your reading assignment, remember? We shall start right here on page three in your text, if I remember correctly. It must have been in the early 1600s when Dutch warships brought the first few Negroes or Africans to Virginia. And they were brought here against their will. They were not born to be slaves, you know. Some were warriors, princes, and even kings. They were farmers, skilled craftspersons, musicians, poets, and sculptors. Their cultures were rich and varied. They were the proud people of Africa, my son, from the smallest pygmy to the tallest Watusi. Come, let me show you. These African sculptures, masks, and wood carvings are very important to their daily lives. They were used to observe the season's change, protect the hunters from evil spirits, and mark the passage from childhood into the adult world. The masks they wore were sometimes half man and half beast, or half male and half female. These masks were thought to contain great power. When worn in a dance or ceremony, the mask became a living spirit in itself. And if you take a close look at the art of black Americans today, you will see that the spirit and talent of the Africans is very much alive. Even the European art of the 20th century, which we thought to be new, had its roots in African art. I'm pretty good at art myself. Well, I'm not surprised. It's a talent that's part of your heritage, Jean, developed by many generations before you. Tell me more about the African slaves. African American slaves. And they really should be referred to as captives. But they were captured in Africa as free men, women, and children, and they were made to be slaves in America. Now watch. My hand. This scene depicts a slave market where our ancestors were sold at auctions. Some of these slaves worked in cotton fields for plantation owners. Others worked on railroads and in shipyards as stevedores. 
Stevie who? <laughs> no, no, Steve Adore, uh, a person who works at loading and unloading cargo on a ship. Oh. Some of them were farm hands and servants. These slaves worked very, very hard and kept their mouths shut to protect themselves. Many, oh, too many, were separated from their families, and the only thing that kept them going was their faith. Their faith in God and in themselves. In the evening, they would entertain each other with gospel songs and Negro folk tales. Folk tales? You never heard the story of the talking turtle? Talking turtle? Are you jiving me? Jiving you? I see that the language has all developed down through the generations. The story of the talking turtle and many other wonderful stories and tales are all in books, Jean. Books that you'll find here at the museum, but otherwise would be very hard to find. You mean black men made up all these stories? Black men and women. That's cool. What about doctors and lawyers and famous people? Didn't we have any of those? Of course we did. Come with me. Wait a minute. I have to tie my shoe. <laughs> and this, my son, is the Hall of Fame. And these are some of the famous people who helped to abolish slavery. You owe your freedom to these people. They were all fugitive slaves and later became abolitionists. Freedom fighters. They became what? <laughs> Come, let them tell you their own stories. This man is the teacher's teacher, the Honorable Frederick Douglass. I did not know that I was a slave until I found out I could not do the things I wanted to do. I found this theory of slavery puzzling. I knew of whites who were not slaveholders, and I knew of persons who were nearly white who were slaves. Color, therefore, was a very unsatisfactory basis for slavery. It was not color, but crime. Not God, but man. So I fought to abolish slavery. For what man can make, man can unmake. And this is Sojourner Truth. I, Sojourner Truth, was a great and forceful orator. After the Civil War, I set up the first plan for settling the freed slaves in the West. And there, Harriet Tubman. During the Civil War, I, Harriet Tubman, started the Underground Railroad. I made approximately 30 trips to the South to lead other slaves to liberty. In all, I brought 300 slaves to freedom. Well, that's only a few of our great people. Oh, there were so many more. Benjamin Banneker, George Washington Carver, Booker T. Washington, and Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois. All of them were very well educated. Are you impressed? Well, they didn't have no fun. I mean, any fun. <laughs> What kind of fun do you mean? I mean like sports, you know, like Reggie Jackson, Dusty Baker. I mean real famous people, like Muhammad Ali. You're jumping a gun. <laughs> Slow down. Don't, don't jump ahead. Famous is who you know, those who have been honored for their achievements. This is the Hall of Fame. They're all illustrious and distinguished. Need I say more? No, no. Tell me about that one. That's Langston Hughes. He's one of the greatest poets this country has ever produced. I get your point. Speaking of points, come with me. Now this brings us to the point of impact. What? What do you mean? A man who made his living finding just the right point of impact for other men's jaws. Have you ever heard of Jack Johnson? No. Who was he? Jack Johnson 
was the very first black heavyweight champion of the world. All right, now that was fun. Ah, but Jack Johnson represented more than just sports and fun. He won the title when he defeated Jim Jeffries, a mighty white boxer. And that single triumph lifted the spirits and hopes of Negroes for many years after. I'll never forget that day. It was in 1910. And there were many other great black athletes before Muhammad Ali. Like who? Joe Lewis. Lewis measured him right to the body, a left up to the jaw, and Schmeling is down. The men are in the ring. The fight is over on a technical knockout. The winner and still champion, Joe Lewis. Oh, there have been many. You just don't know about them. Paul Robeson, Jackie Robinson, Althea Gibson, Jesse Hoynes, We Mays. Oh, there have been many. Hey, that's all right. You only know your stuff. <laughs> What's that? Cotton. One of the true staples in the world. It provided jobs, clothing, food, and shelter for many people. It even provided oil. And the word cotton came to signify a great entertainment center in New York City, the famous Cotton Club. So many great entertainers. There was Josephine Baker, Canada Lee, Bill Robinson, the great Ethel Waters, even Jack Johnson used to go there. <laughs> yes, <clears throat> well, enough is enough. Now, speaking of the new Negro, there's one very important person we must talk about. Someone who, if you were a little older, you might have seen in person. Who? Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. I know him, we get his birthday off from school. And well, you should. Although Dr. King lived only a short time ago, things were different before he came along. A good deal of the equal rights and freedom you enjoy today, Gene, are due to his work. Oh, I see. Oh, yes, I see. Because I'm free. I'm free. Because I'm free. Oh, is I. Yes, is I. Is happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. Dr. King's life was cut short by an assassin's bullet before he could fully realize his dream. But he inspired millions to struggle for freedom and fulfillment of that dream. His spirit still continues to be a source of pride, dignity, and encouragement for black people everywhere. Well, my time is up. Remember, Jean, you have much to be proud of. Yours is a rich heritage. Remember, Jean, 
there is always the light of knowledge at the end of darkness. Use it. Use it wisely. Wait, wait a minute. Come back. Jean, what do you have to say for yourself? What have you learned? What have you learned? Now, Jean, you have one more chance. What year were the first slaves brought to this country? No one really knows for sure, but it was around 1619. They were brought here by Dutch warships against the wheels and sold in slave markets. They worked on plantations, railroads, and in shipyards. There was Jean de Sable, Frederick Douglass, and Jack Johnson, and even before Muhammad Ali. Hold it, hold it. I only ask you about the first slaves, and you're giving me 400 years of history in five seconds. Slow down, slow down. <laughs> oh, but I must admit I am impressed, however. Very good, Gene. Very good. <laughs> Class dismissed.